Welcome, Rotarian and guests, to um, the most fun Rotary Club in the world, if I might say so myself. Thank you. Um, before we get started today, I'd like to invite Christina Bolhouse up to the podium to lead us in the five-way test pledge and prayer. And then after that, Kelly Fleming is going to introduce our guest today. All right. Greetings, everyone. Let's start with the five-way test. Of the things we think, say, or do, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And is it fun? <laughs> now, please bow your heads for our prayer. O oh, creator of all, we are grateful for this opportunity to be together. We ask a special blessing for the interns that are gathered here today and for those companies and individuals acting as mentors and providing opportunities for them. We pray also that you provide us and our leaders wisdom. Guide us in how we can make a difference and help us in setting an example for others of service above self. O Lord of all, we pray. Amen. And now for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good afternoon. We have a great full house today. So um, because of time, let's do this. Would all of our interns, our visiting interns, please stand? Wow. That's fantastic. Thank y'all all, all so very much for being here. We hope you get a good taste of Rotary today. Who knows, you may be the next Natalie Gadotti, president of your local chapter. And then would all of our other guests and their sponsors please stand today, their hosts. Another great crowd. Thank you. Thank you so much. I need glasses for this last one. We are welcoming a, a visiting Rotarian, Vincent Ezbuzem, thank you very much, uh, from the Rotary Club of Osubi, Nigeria. Vincent, welcome. Thank you. We're so glad each of you is here. All right, thank you, President, past President Christina and Kelly, um, and welcome to all of our visitors today. There's a lot of you, so we're so excited that you're here and joining us for Rotary Club of Little Rock. Um, so usually at this point, Elizabeth Cloxton, your membership uh, recruitment chair, would come up and introduce a new member. And I have to tell you that, um, unfortunately, one of our new members got sick this morning, but I just had to brag on Elizabeth and her committee for a few minutes because they have... Um, all sorts of new members already lined up, so we'll, we'll double up next week, but um, they are doing a fabulous job. There's just so much momentum going on in this club right now, and um, you know, thanks to Denver and Molly who got that going, and then we're carrying that through. There's so much interest, and so please, if you have people um, that you think would make a great member of Club 99, get with Elizabeth or anybody on her committee because they um, are doing a fabulous job following up with people and getting them engaged. So um, a few quick announcements before we jump into our program today. Um, just as a reminder, uh, our big week next week at Dunbar um, is coming up. So Monday, the bag stuffing. Thursday, the back to school bash with them. Monday night is also our happy hour at Lost 40. So all that's in your newsletter. So please definitely take a peek and sign up um, if you can help us at Dunbar. Um, 
I also want to pass on a little sad yet good news here. Um, sadly, our amazing, awesome Ross Al Young at our programs committee is moving to Bentonville, boo, but <laughs> he has a fabulous opportunity with Heartland Forward that was here um, not too uh, shortly, recently um, presenting, and um, so he's going to be moving to Bentonville. He's done an incredible job with programming, and we'll miss him here in Little Rock, but I know um, he will do big things there, um, and I want to let you know that Amy Mines, who's right over here and brought interns today, thank you, um, is taking the helm at programs, and she's been an amazing member already, and Ross was like, you need to get Amy to do this, so thank you, Amy, <laughs> for being willing to serve and stepping up. She's going to do rock star work for sure. So, um, all right, so now for our power of fun tip this week. So for those who are guests today, um, our rotary theme this year is the power of fun. And it's really all about um, figuring out how we can incorporate fun more into our lives to, um, to really be healthier and happier. And so, um, wanted to talk to you about play today. So I don't know if any of you know that there's a National Institute for Play, but Dr. Stuart Brown is the founder of it, and he's the really the most for, for, world's foremost um, expert on play and its benefits to our health, namely the brain. So through years of research, Dr. Brown has determined that play, aka true fun that we've been talking about, is a necessity in brain development and engagement. So in much of his research, he has found that people who continue to play games and to explore and learn, both of which are forms of play throughout life, are not only much less prone to dementia and other neurological conditions, but they're also less likely to get heart disease and other diseases um, like that that really seem like they have nothing to do with the brain but do. Um, so here are on the slide here, here are some of the things that have been significantly proven to lower our risk of disease and lengthening our lives. These are through different scientific researches. Um, not being chronically anxious and stressed, which obviously fun can counteract. Feeling confident, being able to find humor in life, laughing, having strong social ties like we do here in Club 99, also being part of a community like we are here in Club 99. Spending time in nature, being physically active, feeling focused, engaged, and present, feeling purposeful, and feeling a sense of control. All of these things are elements of having fun and play, and they're so important to our longevity. So um, just wanted to, to reflect on that. Stuart Brown says play is essential to good life and also reflects our core authentic self. In fact, he says life without play is a life without books, without movies, art, music, jokes, dramatic stories. A world without play means no flirting, no daydreaming, no comedy, and no irony. So I don't know about you, but that sounds really horrible. <laughs> so your challenge this week is to figure out at least one playful thing that you can do this week, preferably on repeat. So that, that's your challenge this week. Um, all right, well, I am excited to get our program going today. Uh, Chris Mangan is going to come up here and do some introductions and then bring up our moderator and our panelists. So, Chris. Thank you, President Gadotti, uh, filling in for uh, awesome Ross today. Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our moderator and panel for today's program called Summer Internships, Making It a Win-Win for You and Them. Today you'll hear about best practices from industry professionals at Stevens Inc., Rose Law Firm, and Stone Ward on how to get the most out of your summer interns while giving them the practical hand, hands-on experience that helps prepare them for post-college careers. Our moderator today is Mimi San Pedro, Chief Strategy Officer for the Venture Center with more than 30 years experience across information, technology, and strategic marketing industries. Mimi helps galvanize the Venture Center's growth, driving key initiatives that serve the entrepreneurial and corporate innovation sectors. Mimi has also served as Chief Marketing Officer for NLC Products, a national catalog and e-commerce company, and in senior leadership roles at Hortus, Axiom, and ContourMed. Our panelists for today's discussion are Stephen Ransdell, Vice President and Training Coordinator at Stevens Inc., 
Ransdell joined Stevens Inc. in 2018 and has more than 20 years consulting experience with clients in all aspects of their wealth management needs. Previously, he was vice president and regional director at another investment firm and earned his BBA degree in finance from the University of Central Arkansas. Nicole Gore is an attorney at Rose Law Firm's Little Rock office where she focuses her practice primarily on state, local, individual, and corporate taxation, as well as various tax-based and revenue bond issues. She is also involved in bond council matters with the firm and has worked with the Arkansas Development Finance Authority and various municipalities, public facilities boards, improvement districts, educational institutions, and other public institutions. Matthew Stewart is a marketing analyst at Stoneward Advertising. Matt brings an in-depth understanding of website attribution, analysis, data management, and forecasting to clients that include Baptist Health, Natural Gear, Arkansas Game and Fish Commission, and Sissy's Log Cabin. In this role, he creates data visualizations for clients and stays abreast of the latest advancements in data analysis. Peyton Ellis is a copywriter at Stone Ward. She got her start in advertising as a summer intern at the, at the firm. As a copywriter, Peyton puts herself in the target audience's shoes and crafts language and phrases that will motivate them to take action. Her clients include the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission, Terminix International, Hounds Lounge Pet Resort and Spa, and America's Car Mart. Peyton is also co-leader of Stone Ward's internship program called Camp Reality. Please welcome our panel. while the rest of the panel is coming up here. Uh, I don't know, Natalie, you know, the play thing. I don't know if Mega Millions is part of play, but I, I just did that a few minutes ago. <laughs> so, you know, you never know, you never know. So thank you so much for uh, inviting me to be a moderator. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, one of the things I wanted to start with is you, Matthew, and possibly Peyton, because I know that Stone Award has had an internship program for almost 30 something years. And I just kind of want you to talk about that and then we'll just go down the line, provide an overview of how it's got started and, you know, and a little background about it. Well, uh, this is a loaded question because Camp Reality is older than me. Um, and Mimi here was one of the people who founded it. Um, starting around 8990, um, the focus of Camp Reality is that in a lot of businesses, you need to have your foot in the door. Uh, being in Little Rock, we know that it's a city of two degrees of separation. And one of Larry, Millie, and Mimi's goals with setting up Camp Reality was to give interns not only the opportunity to dive into advertising, learn about it, but give them that ability to have their foot in the door. I fully agree with that statement, and I'm an example of getting my foot in the door because, because of Millie and Larry. I was an intern five years ago, and a few months after that, I got my first job at Stone Ward. Awesome. Going down the line, okay. Um, so Rose Law Firm, we always joke that summer associate time is like Christmas in the office. Everyone gets so excited. Um, we put so much emphasis on the summer associate program with the intention that when a summer associate walks in the door, he or she is given the same responsibilities and the same opportunities as if um, he or she was walking in the door as a first year associate. So when we hire um, our summer associates, we really try and emulate and let them know, you know what, it, what it would be like if they worked at Rose Law Firm. And we really carry that through the program and we don't have any sort of curated set of projects for them or anything. It's really whatever we are working on day to day with the goal in mind throughout that we want them to know exactly um, what it would be like to work you know, in our practice areas as well as what it would be like to work with everyone at the firm. Steven? Um, a lot of the same as the other panelists here, uh, you know, we're looking for talent for the future of our firm and to build the next advisors for Stevens. And the only way to do that is go out there and start, as they said, start curating activity and finding new people with interest in our industry. And uh, the way we do that is bring them in and, and it's, it is exciting. We just, they just left last Friday, so our office was, Monday was really quiet. Um, and we all missed them already. Uh, so we hate when they leave, but it is fun when they come and getting their hands, you know, in on what we do day to day, we treat them just like they're one of our analysts uh, in our program. 
And so they go through the rotations, they, they do everything. I won't go into too much, but uh, so we treat them just like they're regular analysts on a day-to-day -day basis. So Stevens, we're starting with you. Uh, talk about uh, qualification requirements, you know, that you look at uh, when you're hiring the interns. Well, first and foremost in our industry, you gotta have some interest in it. You gotta wanna be in our industry. Uh, so through discussions, I start talking to, you know, different kids in college and getting out there and meeting and, and spreading the word the, of what you know, type of an environment we work in and, and the opportunities as a career. And so that level of engagement usually brings out questions of whether they wanna be you know, in the industry, in the finance, uh, as an advisor. And so it really comes down to that. Obviously, we're, we're looking for young, talented, uh, enthusiastic you know, personalities uh, that wanna you know, be around people and, and work with people every day. I'll go, go ahead. Next. <laughs> I'll go with what Steven said about we definitely look for enthusiastic students and typically juniors and seniors in college. And we divide our interns up via like in different disciplines. So we have one intern per department pretty much to make up their own small agency. And so it really doesn't matter their major too much. Like obviously if they're in graphic design, they need to have that kind of background, but as long as they're interested and excited and have some experience, like I was a writing intern and I was an English major in college, so it can kind of translate that way, but we're looking at the individual and if they have creativity across the board. We do the bulk of our hiring through on-campus interviews at Fayetteville and at Bowen here in Little Rock. We of course have an email address on our website that allows students from out of state to email in resumes if they have an interest in working in Little Rock or moving back to Little Rock. Um, of course, there are GPA, you know, requir not requirements. We look at GPA, we look at, you know, an academic record when we um, get these resumes in, but that is, you know, just a small part of what we look at when we have these candidates interview. Um, we try and do a holistic approach. So we travel up to Fable for the interviews. We don't do it by Zoom because we want to you know, shake their hands and get to know them as a person, not only as a law student. What are their interests? Do they align with what we do at Rose? You know, for instance, if someone comes in and they're, you know, number one in their class, but they want to do criminal law, I mean, that's just, it wouldn't be helpful for them if they interviewed at Rose, because we don't do that. So we really want it to be beneficial for us as the, as the employer, but also for the, the summer associates. Um, we want it to be beneficial for them. So when we look at hiring, we do look at, you know, the mechanics of GPA and, and rank and all of that stuff, but it, that's not what we hire based upon. We look at everything and, and interests and, you know, extracurriculars, just the, the full person, not just a, a number on a page. Yeah, you brought up a good point, uh, going to colleges and recruiting. How else, uh, Matthew, do you uh, get the word out when it comes to Camp Reality? Yeah, um, so we last year traveled, I think, to about five or six colleges. We did some, a lot of email strategy. We did social media. Mm -hmm. Being at an ad agency, we uh, have a bit of an unfair advantage <laughs> at some of this. Um, but we will target, uh, we'll do like a Facebook campaign where we put a couple hundred dollars and we'll target around different universities. Um, that's helped. But really the best way that we've had success and um, we've been trying to rebuild this since COVID is that word of mouth is the strongest way to get someone to join and apply. Um, and what we typically do is we follow up with our last year's intern say, hey, you were a great intern, we'd love it if you would recommend our program to your classmates. And that's how we'll get invited to classes that way and we'll get to speak, whether it's over Zoom or coming in person. How about you, Steven? Uh, absolutely, word of mouth is uh, the best way for us to get involved, um, whether it's through finance uh, club in, in Fayetteville or at Ole Miss, so we go to different campuses. Mm -hmm. Uh, usually talking to the finance students uh, or portfolio classes. Um, we don't limit it necessarily to that. Uh, I've done different groups at different colleges um, because it's, you know, we don't have to just be in finance to be in our field, um, but it's that level of interest I talked about earlier. Um, so we go through the process very similar on campus, usually do a Zoom initially to kind of get an idea of the type of person we're talking to and then have them come in for an interview in the home office. So in the, inside the, uh, each of your company, is there a committee? Um, you know, I know that it is a very structured, some of it is a very structured internship program. Talk a little bit about how you structure it internally. 
and what does that look like and how's the selection you know uh, managed yeah so like Peyton said we uh, depending on how uh, what departments are free we have between six and nine interns each year and we ask the director of each department to select someone in that department to be the mentor um, they usually look for a mentor who is willing to take time and is dedicated to ed education and teaching them the craft of whatever they're learning. Because um, a lot of times, you know, uh, with something like media buying, our intern might be really smart, but they don't know what media buying is. And so we have to teach them from the ground up. So we're always looking for someone who's understanding. Uh, and that's how we start that process. When, we, when they hire, each will do it differently. Um, our most successful mentors uh, tend to really try to get to know the person. They'll do about two rounds of interviews, and then um, they'll select based on uh, typically enthusiasm, uh, how much they've uh, put into their portfolio. Um, so, for example, our copywriting intern this year was uh, an English major but knew nothing about ads and literally went and learn how to write ads by emailing us and asking for, hey, what do ad spets look like? And we were happy to provide that. We love that they were willing to email and ask for that information. So Rose Law Firm has some faith in us as a recruiting team because we're fairly small and we do, there's a couple of us that go to the on-campus interviews and make the final selections as to who will be you know, with us for the summer. Um, that said, once the summer starts, the game totally changes and it's really a full firm approach to the summer associates. Mm -hmm. We have uh, two or three associates who are deemed our summer associate coordinators, and they are the boots on the ground team that are coordinating lunches, coffees, events, making sure that our summer associates are getting you know, enough projects to keep them busy, but not too many projects to where they feel overwhelmed, because that's not the goal. We don't want them to feel like workhorses while they're with us. We want them to learn and grow. We don't want to you know, kill them. So <laughs> we do, we structure it. Our firm is a litigation, half litigation, half business transactional. So we try and emulate that with the summer associates. So when they walk in the door for six weeks, three of their weeks will be spent with the litigation team, three of their weeks will be split with the business team. And we do that so not only are they exposed to all different practice areas, but they're exposed to all different people at the firm. And we physically move their office location into those different areas so they really feel like they're in the midst of what's going on in those different practices. And we do that because when it comes to hiring, we solicit feedback from everyone in the firm. It's an, like an all call, please send any, any positive, any, you know, it's rarely negative, but any, you know, any feedback you have about the summer associates, um, because we want it to be a group decision when someone is hired and not, you know, we don't want someone to feel like, oh, I had no idea that was coming. So <laughs> while it is a little, it's a smaller team when we actually hire the summer associates for the summer, it then opens up to a big firm-wide approach when it comes to hiring for an associate position. So, uh, so now you have the intern selected. Let's talk, you know, finances. So how much do you pay? Uh, interns are coming from all over the country, all over the state. Uh, what about housing? How do you structure that? So our interns receive a living stipend of $2,800, and it's um, paid in four increments throughout the summer. So every other week they get paid for their eight weeks there. And um, as far as living goes, we often will have out-of-state interns like either staying in Airbnb. We always offer up um, housing with UALR. That's an opportunity for interns who are coming from out-of-state. We even have some um, team members uh, who will offer up a room to an intern if they really need a place to stay. That hasn't happened very many times, but in the past it has. Um, and then also like family and friends is another common place where out-of-state interns will stay. But luckily, if you're from the area, then you get $2,800 to spend for the summer without many other expenses it turns out really nicely for local interns. Steven? Uh, we pay on an hourly, hourly rate, um, and most of the time our interns are usually living where they are from or they go to school, so they already have housing. So in more of our, most of our major markets, whether it's here in Little Rock or Memphis or Dallas or Fayetteville or Atlanta, they're usually from there and they can live at home. Uh, so we don't have a lot of displacement from them moving around. So they get paid an hourly rate to come in, eight hours a day. Um, I, we don't do a lot of overtime for interns. I found that out the hard way. Um, <laughs> but uh, they, they'll rack it up if you allow them to. How about you, Nicole? 
Yes, we pay um, a fixed salary weekly, so for the six weeks they get paid weekly, and we try and keep it competitive, you know, with the other firms in town. Um, I think it changes marginally every year. Um, when it comes to housing, it's really word of mouth. A lot of people already have housing lined up via friends or family because the bulk of, of our summer associates are from here or going to school in Fayetteville. Um, but we always do offer, you know, if you have any trouble you know, finding housing, let us know. And I have sent all firm emails asking for, you know, does anyone know an apartment that needs, you know, renting or an Airbnb, you know, anything like that. So we try and just brainstorm as much as we can to help them with as much as they can when they move move to town, if that's the case. Okay, so now they're here at your firms and, and agencies. Uh, what's, what's, the, uh, how, the, what's the orientation like? Um, how do you assign them to different areas? And, you know, how does that work? I can start. <laughs> well, whenever our interns get to us, they are already assigned their like departments. So the copywriter's the copywriter, the PR person's the PR person. And like Matt said, it's usually like seven to nine interns. This past year we had seven. But um, on their first day, many of them have never been exposed to an ad agency before. So it is a full day of meeting every single department. They come into our main presentation center conference room and they stay in their seats pretty much all day. But we have the different department heads come in for 30 minutes apiece and just like let them know what their role is, how it ties into all the other roles at the agency, because it's just brand new information for our interns. And we break for lunch and they get to take a little bit of a breather. <laughs> and then at the end of the day, they get to meet their mentors who they'll be spending a lot of time with and learning from over the summer. And then day two, they end up meeting their client, which is or learning more about their client. Our interns always have a pro bono project. It's just to them. This past year, it was Arkansas Cinema Society. That, that's awesome. Steven? Uh, first day, so we start our interns the same time we start our analyst class. So they participate in the overview and first day activities with our analysts. Uh, so we go through the orientation, we have a full day of, first you gotta go to HR and get your fingerprints and your picture and all that good stuff. But uh, then we spend the afternoon talking about expectations of the program, not only for our analysts over the next two years, but our interns for the summer. Um, so they're they're involved in the day-to-day -day process just like if they were in the program, which is I think important. And then usually we um, we pick an afternoon if it's not that first day to bring the home office together and introduce them all and have a little happy hour of to get them to, so they can get to know everybody in a setting outside of outside of work. That's the play, Natalie. That's the play thing, uh, Nicole. Yes. Yeah, so we do a full day as well of like. Um, I, I, their first day we do confidentiality, we do where's the printer, we do who to talk to when this happens. And where's the bathroom? Yes, where's the bathroom? Um, Where do you get the treats? Exactly, we, we, we just got a sonic ice machine, so we show them the sonic ice machine. We, yes, do all of the tour, we get, uh, introduce them to everyone, and then we do a first day lunch with the summer associates and the associates. So by the end of the first day, you know, they've, they've gone through all the administrative matters and they've, they're really starting, you know, first projects. And we try and, you know, the, the attorneys of the firm are get, getting emails months in advance of reminders, summer associates are starting on X date, please think of projects. So when they come in the door, I mean, there are projects that are, you know, waiting for them or research, you know, things that they could help with. So while it is administrative for probably through lunch, maybe a little bit after lunch, then it pivots to, to the real work and they, they get in the mix. So uh, I love an internship program, but there are some issues, right? Uh, one of the issues that I want you guys to address is what if uh, are your internal folks are like, we don't have time for this. You know, um, we're so busy. We've got this project going on. We've got this deadline. I don't have time for, you know, Matthew to talk to me about what he's, what I'm doing and training, train him about what, you know, he needs to be doing. Talk about, like, how do you uh, address some of the issues like that? Well, that's a hard question. I would say, um, we head that off by our mentor selection process. Um, we choose people who are dedicated to making the time and education. Um, I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, with advertising, it's just an ad. It can always wait a few more minutes to make sure it's done right and to take the time to teach someone to do, to do it well. So we prioritize um, making sure they understand why if um, someone is too busy, we always have a support team who can mentor them. Um, for our art directors, uh, we usually have two mentors for them so that um, if one's busy, they can go to the other. Um, and, you know, we didn't have a media intern this year, but our media team would help out 
um, and add, answer questions about research um, when the brand managers might have been busy. So, Stephen, have you had anything like that in your firm? Well, we, we designate certain people, um, obviously play a role of mentorship just with my position, uh, spending time with them weekly um, to go over different concepts and what they're working on currently. Um, then we have other advisors in the field that we'll attach them to, some of them maybe long-term experience, some of them only been in the business five to eight years, so they can get both perspectives about being in our industry and, and just listening to the stories that that you know you want to hear about uh, the day-to-day -day and so forth so let's turn it around and what if the intern or interns that you chose is not working out what happens Nicole we've never had anyone not work out during the six weeks but when it comes for <laughs> thank goodness, goodness. <laughs> um, when it comes uh, to hiring you know I feel like it's just a natural progression I feel like when we have summer associates that don't that aren't hired at the firm it's rarely a surprise. I feel like usually their interests don't align with, you know, the practice areas at Rose. Or, you know, what if they're moving, you know, they want to live in their hometown, and that's just not where Rose is, where we have an office. So I feel like by the end of the summer, and you can really kind of tell, you know, who has the interest in, in Rose. We always say that, you know, when you walk in the door, like, you're qualified to do the legal work. I mean, you make good grades, you're a good student, you're, you're surviving law school, and that's a feat in and of itself. So it's really like, can you integrate yourself with the people at the firm, and can, do you want to be part of the team? And it's, it's usually pretty apparent. So when something doesn't work out, I feel like it's, it's rarely a surprise. And it's, and it's best for them, too. We don't want them to come work with us if it's not what's best for them and what they don't want to do. So it's, a, it's definitely a mutual relationship that we just have to work through at the end of the summer. Yeah. Um, when an intern doesn't work out, um, I think the passion, like Nicole said, is really evident to see. We did have that last year with one intern who just didn't have a passion for media buying. But we redirected and found that she had a huge passion for data science. So um, I ended up taking her on as my intern and helping her learn all these uh, new types of models to develop. And she completely changed overnight in terms of how energetic she was. And she became one of our best interns. So sometimes you just have to be flexible in internships. You know, it's, you know, you're hiring someone, they're still in college, they're still figuring out who they are. And I think if we are more understanding, that can sometimes be it. Um, we haven't also never had uh, an intern just like be awful or anything. We, <laughs> our mentors are pretty good at finding uh, people who are typically interested. So uh, how are the interns measured? What is the uh, NSS doing the process? Stephen? Um, well, first, I mean, to back up on what they said, uh, you know, it's an interview not only for us, but for them as well, sure. to get to know us during the summer. And hopefully if, if those relationships match, then we'll give them an offer to come back and do a final interview. Um, so most of the time it's worked out, but not everybody gets an offer to come back. Um, and some of them haven't wanted to. Uh, but so we assess through, obviously, you know, just work ethic um, and look at how engaged they are in their day-to-day -day activities um, they, they do take quizzes every week, and uh, just as our first year analysts do, we go over different curriculums, and they have meetings with different areas uh, that they rotate through to learn about different products and planning and advisory and every, every part of our business. And so with that curriculum, they take quizzes, and so we throw our, our interns in there as well. And I tell them, I said, I don't expect you to know all of this because you're doing two-week rotations, you're only getting two modules, so please don't worry about your grade. I just want you to get engaged. And so usually they're sweating a little bit, like I don't know everything, no. Um, so we do that just to keep a good analysis of how they're get, grasping the concepts. And then looking at their quality of work and do they ask questions? Are they, in, are they interested and engaged in what they do every day? Um, and then ultimately they sit down and they, during the summer and they're studying for our interest exam. So the securities industry exam is kind of the introductory exam you have to take to, before you can take your seven. And so one thing they need to do in the summer is study for that and pass it at the end of their internship. So they have two months. Um, and so usually I know whether or not they want to come back if they've scheduled and they sit for that exam and pass it. Um, and so that's always kind of a good, good sign of how, you know, how much they want to be in the business. 
Nico. Um, we do rolling feedback throughout the six week term. It's just an open door. Please send feedback on, you know, Sally. Please let us know what Mike is doing great. And that really does come in pretty regularly from, um, from the attorneys at the firm. At the end of the term, we'll sit down and do, we call it an exit interview, but that's, it just doesn't have a great connotation because it's not really an interview. So, um, we just sit down with them and we give them the feedback that we, you know, receive throughout the term. Um, a lot of it they've already heard because we're really big on, it's not totally helpful if they say, or if they get feedback on something they did five weeks ago. Like, oh, if you're gonna draft a memo, maybe do, tweak this. That's would be really helpful to know if you're in the weeds of it and you have five more weeks of an internship as opposed to hearing it on the last day. So we do try and give them feedback throughout, but we do do the exit lunch where we talk about feedback again, but we also solicit feedback from them. You know, what did you like about our program? What did you not like about our program? What uh, could you see us doing better? And that, we've gotten a lot of great feedback of the things that just didn't work you know, mechanically. Like I mentioned the printer and like stuff like that is what actually comes up. Like when it's like, how do I, you know, get on your, how do I get a document out? Like who, who I talk to if I need to fax something? These little things that come up. So we try and make sure and do a touch base at the end of the term and get feedback and then give them feedback that we've heard from the attorneys. Go ahead, Kate. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Uh, we also do an exit interview, which is very useful. But um, our interns, the main goal of our internship is for students to get that real world advertising experience and to find out if they like advertising, if they want to work in it. Larry's told me before he's talked to an intern who said, you know, this just isn't for me. I had a great summer, but I don't want to be in advertising in the future. <laughs> so you learn that. So um, we have our interns check in with their mentors periodically throughout the program. And then at the end, after they're gone, so our interns left on Friday and um, starting this week and next week, Matt and I will have like one-on-one -on -one conversations with the mentors to ask them like is your intern somebody that we'd be interested in hiring in the future and even though we may not currently be hiring for that position it's just a name to have and remember and reach out to whenever that time should arise and that actually happened one of our interns last year was hired in may after she graduated so when i was at stone award uh there was a specific intern that was so dynamic and I followed him throughout his college years and hired him without Millie and Larry knowing. And, uh, but he worked out so well, Stephen, <laughs> worked out so well and he now owns his own ad agency. So tell us a little bit of some success stories that you've had on, uh, on your internship programs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, to me what success means is that after they leave Camp Reality, they either leave ready to go find a job or they found a job. Um, like Peyton mentioned, we did hire one of our interns from last year. She's already gotten national press pitches. She's in PR, uh, so we're really proud of her. But you know, another intern, she just got a job at a competing agency, MHP, and we were incredibly excited for her because that's what Camp Reality is about. It's helping the students find the jobs. Um, and yeah, so those are those have been a couple recent successes for us. Peyton, you're a success story. You want to talk about that? Why, thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, I feel so blessed and just so lucky to have been an intern at Stonewall because I was one of those kids that had no idea what advertising was. I just knew I enjoyed writing and I knew that I wanted to do something involving writing. So whenever I saw that copywriting internship, I took that chance and luckily Millie and Larry let me come aboard for that summer and then a few months later I was able to see a job opening and sure enough they remembered who I was and I was able to get that job and I'm still here five years later and it's just been the best job in the world. That's awesome. Steven? Um, we definitely try to take the opportunity especially if they're at universities near one of our offices to keep them on as interns during the school year because uh, your biggest threat once the interns leave is you'll have mentioned um, they either forget about you, they can forget about you, right? Um, they could take another opportunity um, or they might go a different direction. And so if we can keep them on as interns throughout the school year where we have the opportunities to do that, it usually works really well in getting them to come back and be a part of the program, which is my ultimate goal for interns is to come back and be a, and start in the program. Um, but it, you know, I've had, I've had people that, you know, that aren't, that we, as we mentioned earlier, they don't come back um, for different reasons, um, but I know if we can stay involved, even if they're not interning, my biggest goal is to stay involved with them, having calls every quarter, if I'm at that university, making sure I get in front of them, and keeping them engaged 
if they're not interning for us through the school year. Um, so success is always getting them back in the office, accepting an offer and joining the firm. Yeah. How about you, Nicole? Yes, agreed. So our recruiting is, we hire associates almost exclusively from our summer associate program. Of course, we have laterals and students from, you know, who didn't go through the traditional route with us, but the vast majority of the, of the associates we hire are summer associates. So since I've been at the firm, um, we've never had someone turn down a job offer through our summer associate program. So we're really proud of that. And I think when it comes to success stories, um, it's the people that currently, I mean, work at Rose because a lot of our partners were summer associates and they, you know, worked their way up. So I think that like, because the firm puts so much emphasis on the program and everyone really understands that it's, it's a communal effort, you know, if we want good people in the door, if we want good lawyers working with us, we have to put in the time for those, you know, 12 weeks and make sure that our summer associates that we do end up hiring do come work with us. It's, it's, it'd be no fun, knock on wood, we haven't hired for the summer yet. I just probably jinxed myself. But, um, but I think the success stories are the people that we, that we hire, and they turn out to be pretty great. That's awesome. So I'm going to stick with uh, Natalie's uh, theme for today, and it's playful. Um, tell us about some fun things that you, ha you guys do and have to offer the, the, you know, the interns. So I'm going to say there's fun education, and then there's fun fun. Fun education, we plan about eight field trips uh, throughout the internship program, about one a week. Uh, we take them to uh, KRK, we take them to Central High School, we brought them here to the Clinton Center, that was their last field trip. And all of these are designed to get them out and think about different businesses and how marketing works within each of them. Because uh, we can talk about it, we can let them write copy or a press release, but until you walk and understand a business, you can't understand how it's marketed. Um, and a lot of them always, we ask for feedback on all of the field trips we take, and we always get really good results from that, and so they always really enjoy that. For fun, though, we did print a bunch of Nerf basketballs and ha played some basketball games on our tiny little Nerf hoop in the office, <laughs> and that was a lot of fun. So we, uh, we do try to bring some fun energy and get them moving uh, just to, uh, kind of shake up the day because you know sometimes a lot of interns they're not used to sitting from eight to five it takes time to get used to that extra two <laughs> hours they're used to you know morning classes nap afternoon classes <laughs> Yeah, so I was joking with Ross. I actually just got back yesterday from a Top Golf event with our summer associates. So um, if you don't classify depositions as fun, which we do try and <laughs> we try and bring them to all the depositions and hearings as as, as much as possible. If there is, if an attorney is leaving the office or is bringing a client in, more often than not, there's a summer associate sitting there with them because we want to make sure that they get that that aspect of fun, if you would call it fun. But we do really try and do lunches with every partner and every of counsel and every associate at the firm. We do coffees um, probably once a week. Um, we do one big summer associate party for each term, um, and that's you know with everyone at the firm, usually at a partner's house, usually involves tacos, and it's just a time to get to know them because, like I said before, we really I feel like the summer associates who get the most out of the program are the ones who really integrate themselves with the firm while they're here. So the ones that show up to all those events and you know play top golf even if it's not their favorite thing to do, like that really is impressive and it stands out and it, we appreciate it. So we try and do lunches, coffees, happy hour every now and again, and then and then a couple more fun bigger events. Peyton, you have anything to add? I'll add to what Matt said. We also do lunches with all the directors every week. Uh, they'll have like at least one director lunch a week, and that's a lot of fun because the people at Stone Ward are not only professional, but they're also just hilarious, most of them, so it's always like eating with a comedian, um, especially <laughs> Brett Parker, for example. If anybody knows him, he's a joy to be around, so the lunches are always a great time. Steven? Well, it's frowned upon to play Nerf basketball in the office. <laughs> so uh, we do go, we have lunches, and um, so we have that with some of the advisors or maybe our head of our department, Kevin Scanlon. Um, so we do get them out for lunches, and then once a month I have an event planned for our analyst program, and of course the interns get involved. So we've had a pickleball tournament, which got pretty aggressive. Uh, we have a couple of, well, we have a lot of number of athletes in our in our group, but uh, a couple of our interns are athletes, and one of them is going to play club volleyball in Italy this this fall. 
so bless her heart. Um, she's pretty, pretty athletic and very, uh, she does not like to lose. <laughs> so uh, needless to say, she did get integrated with the group. Uh, so that was a lot of fun, and we'll do a bowl. We did bowling last Thursday at Dust Bowl, um, just food and drinks, and we split into teams, and it gets competitive immediately. Um, my team won. I just, yeah. I just want y'all to know. That. I didn't pick it either. I didn't pick it. Uh, so that's it's a big part of it about the culture and being a part of it. It's not just as they said to sit around, you know, eight to five and doing what they're expected to do. It's integrating personally and into the culture and with the people you work with. And so that's a big part to figure out who, you know, who you want to come back. I don't know about you guys, but I kind of want to get be young again and go through this internship program. So, <laughs> I mean, I really do. So uh, any questions from the, from the crowd? Go ahead. All right. First of all, I'll tell you, I love the intern program because I started my 39th year in the intern program at Merrill Lynch last week. <laughs> so I'm a real strong supporter of that. <laughs> Forget my voice. So tell me what do you look at in a resume that gets your attention when maybe the GPA did not. Eagle Scout, Palm, you know, the head of the Palm team, something like that. So that's one thing. The other thing, has any intern done something completely, you know, different that got your attention? They were at your car door when you arrived at work at 7 in the morning. They came to your house and gave you a Coke to say, I want you to know me. Has anyone done something like that that was real cool? I'll go. First of all, I interned in 98, 99 in your office. <laughs> yeah. So I'm aging myself and you. You already aged yourself, so I'm, now I'm aging myself. Um, in, uh, when you, resume, look at a lot of resumes. Obviously, you can weed the weak ones out really quick. Um, but, uh, you know, there's, there's business schools like at Arkansas. They have a great resume building um, group up there. I don't know their names, but if somebody comes to me and asks how do you get a resume, I say you go to the business department in Fayetteville, and they have somebody there, so ask around. Um, but you know, you gotta, it's, it's gotta be some formality to it. It needs to be easy to read and follow. I don't need your life story on there. Um, I want to know that you've been involved in a community. I want to know you've made your grades. I want to know that you're socially out there meeting people or being a part of committees in the community, um, that you're not sitting in your room just studying and have zero social life because we're in the people business. And so you've got to be around people. Um, and so just looking at that a lot, just to try to understand who they are. Um, but I don't always let it limit me to who I reach out to. I'm mostly going to reach out to everybody unless it's just really bad. <laughs> Any other questions before we turn it over to back to Natalie? Well, let's give uh, the panelists a hand of applause because they did a great job. Thank you all. Thank you guys. If you'll stay there for just one minute, because I've got, I've got some speaker gifts for you guys, but I also completely left out our Power of Fun member video. And this year, or this week, it's exceptional. So you're gonna learn um, a little bit about Alicia Curtis. So Jake, roll that footage. <laughs> My name is Alicia Curtis and this is what fun is to me. It's the memories that you make, the experiences that you have doing the things that you love most. I love dressing up. I always wanted to be Cinderella when I grew up. I wanted to go to all the balls and guess what? You get to do that here. And 2019, I planned Governor Hutchinson's inauguration. The most rewarding yet hardest work I've ever done. I don't know if I ever want to do that again, but it was such a blast. And after it was all said and done, the governor gave me this handwritten letter from Governor Hutchinson, February 2019. Alicia, one of the best decisions we made was to have you coordinate the inauguration. 
You not only raised more than $1 million, but you also kept everyone happy. You are the best. With much appreciation, Asa Hutchinson. So, funny story, after the very first inaugural ball in 2015, we had an after party at Samantha's Tap Room. Well, you know, I mentioned Cinderella earlier. Somehow I managed to leave with only one glass slipper. I am not kidding. Apparently Samantha's went online, tweeted, you know, posted on Instagram, Cinderella, where are you? We have your glass slipper. So this high heel is the one that's left over and it sits on my mantle and it is a great conversation piece. Music. Music is a huge part of my life. We go to the Country Music Awards every year. So what we do, go to StubHub, we buy the cheapest tickets. So we are sitting up in the nosebleed at the beginning of the show. We scour to identify what seats are going to be empty for the whole entire show. I don't recommend this for anyone and I'm not saying that this is morally okay or anything like that. I'm just saying it's fun. We confidently go down and we, we sit there and one year, we sat behind the entire cast of the show, the ABC show Nashville, and we were sitting there taking pictures with celebrities. It's the best time talking about fun. Another thing that I absolutely love is champagne. And so, if you are a guest at my house for the very first time, it is tradition that I'm going to make you savor a champagne bottle. On my 35th birthday a few years ago, my best friends all came in together and they bought me a champagne saber. And they also got it engraved. It says, happy birthday, Alicia. And on this side, it's my favorite part. It's a quote from Coco Chanel. I only drink champagne on two occasions, when I am in love and when I am not. Thank you, Alicia. That was awesome. Oh my gosh. <laughs> thank you. I can't believe I forgot that earlier. So thank you for indulging me. So to our speakers, thank you so much for you guys being here and for the interns that are out there. I hope you picked out, picked up on some good tips um, about internships and for the employers. I think these um, folks here have amazing programs that are great to model and to help interns truly learn about your business and the industry and um, hopefully they come back to Little Rock and come work for, your, for organ your organization. So thank you guys. So I do have a special gift for each of you guys. Um, it's a fun piece that um, you see the mural up there. So in a couple of weeks down here in the River Market, th that mural will be painted. And um, it's really about showcasing Little Rock's nature and really our big on fun tagline. And of course, it it resonates with us with our power of fun theme this year. So this is a little something to put on your desk to remind you to have fun in life because it's important. So thank you guys again for being here. Thank you all. So, um, before we head out today, just again, a reminder about the Dunbar events. Also, Ottenheimer, our scholars are coming in just a couple of weeks. Um, T. Martin and Cindy have a few holes left. Um, so if you are looking to entertain two uh, awesome kids from Germany, not kids, young people from Germany and want to show them around town or anywhere in the state, please let T. Martin and Cindy know. And then do not miss next week for sure. Um, I'm so excited. The um, Arkansas Symphony Orchestra is breaking ground on their new music center that will be right behind us here. They're breaking ground on Thursday, but you get the sneak peek on Tuesday. And so um, their team will be here with um, their architect talking about the building, talking about the many, many new programs that they'll have to serve all of the state in music education, which I think is, is so important. And se several members from the Youth Symphony orchestra are going to be here playing um, some of their pieces for us, which I think will be super special. So definitely mark your calendar for that. And I think that's it for this week. So you are adjourned. Thank you.